win yet. We need to wait for the reinforcements. Reinforcements have arrived. When I first heard there was going to be a new RoboCop game coming to the PS5, I have to admit that I was tentatively excited. I absolutely love RoboCop, meaning not just the character, but also the original film, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. I love the blend of satirical comedy, excessive blood and violence, and just a tinge of human drama. I also, for the most part, have enjoyed the numerous video games based on RoboCop, with RoboCop 2 by Data East being an especially fun action title. But over the years, RoboCop became a watered-down version of his former self, with two painfully bad PG-13 films, a children's animated series, which always perplexed me, and let's not forget that time that RoboCop had to save Sting from the Dungeon of Doom. He's pulling that door right off the hinges! Uh -huh. Woohoo! What strength by uh -huh. RoboCop! So as I waited for this game's release, I was left wondering, would we get the PG-13 family-friendly RoboCop, or the RoboCop that shoots criminals in the ball sack. Well, my prayers were obviously answered because Rogue City is definitely the hard R RoboCop that I needed back in my life. The developers at Taeyeon clearly had a lot of love for the character and the series, and put a lot of work into making this game feel like an honest-to-goodness sequel to RoboCop 2, wiping away the memory of the absolutely abysmal RoboCop 3. All of the characters you remember from the films are here, including the old man at the head of OCP, Sergeant Reed and his epic mustache, and a very much alive Ann Lewis, still sticking by RoboCop's side like the loyal friend and partner that she is. And best of all, Peter Weller returns once again to provide the voice of the big guy himself. You are under arrest. Come quietly, or this may be the last economics discussion you will ever have. In terms of story, Rogue City picks up right where the second film left off. The highly addictive drug known as Nuke has flooded the streets, crime is still rampant, and the OCP is still attempting to own all of Detroit so they can build Delta City, their vision for a better future in which they control everything. Enter new character Wendell Antonowski, the supposed brother of Emil from the first movie, aka the guy that gets melted by toxic waste and splattered on a windshield. <gasps> ah! <laughs> Shit! Wendell is for some reason harvesting human brains. While there's also an ongoing struggle between the OCP, the police force, and the criminal gangs infesting Detroit, and RoboCop is once again caught in the middle, struggling with his identity as a soulless law enforcement machine and the remaining humanity of Officer Alex Murphy. It's not exactly Shakespeare, but the story in Rogue City kept me invested, and the vocal delivery, especially from the always awesome Peter Weller, really went a long way to increasing my overall enjoyment of the game. They say that 20 seconds in the California sunshine is too much these days. Ever since we lost the ozone layer. I have a solution for you if you are looking for some protection against that California sunshine. The hell? A stay in Detroit prison. Jerry Jenkins, you are under arrest for the murder of Casey Carmel. I seen you on TV. You're glitching again. Ah, it hurts. For fuck's sake, it hurts. The real meat and blood of Rogue City, though, is the action, and oh boy does it deliver. I'm personally not really a fan of first-person shooters beyond classics like Doom and Duke Nukem. I've never really had any interest in games like Halo or Call of Duty, for example, but Rogue City delivers gameplay that had me grinning from ear to ear, start to finish. As you might expect, your movement is fairly slow, and RoboCop isn't exactly the most agile character in fiction, but he can absorb a hell of a lot of damage, while at the same time blasting criminals into bloody bits. 
You have a lot of different weapons at your disposal, but first and foremost, you have RoboCop's trademark Auto 9 handgun, which has infinite ammo and is very much capable of blasting enemies' limbs, heads, and balls off. Other guns include the always awesome 50 cal machine gun, various pump action shotguns, and those cool sniper rifles that the bad guys had in the first movie. But the Auto 9 is so badass that I rarely felt the need to use anything else. If you're close enough to enemies, you can also punch them, which is an instant kill for most enemies, or pick them up and hurl them like ragdolls, which is also really fun and very satisfying. The challenge is very modest at first, but when you're eventually facing down enemies with way more firepower and mobility, or taking on the dreaded ED-209, things do get a bit more challenging, but the action is always intense and fun. In fact, there are even sections where you compete against the ED-209 and the OCP SWAT team to see who can rack up the most kills, granting you a big bunch of bonus experience points if you come out on top. Speaking of which, experience points are how you'll level up in Rogue City, which gives you the upgrade points you need to be the best RoboCop you can be. You can upgrade numerous different attributes, including your health, durability, offensive power, and other various things that affect your ability to investigate crimes and find evidence. After all, RoboCop is a police officer and has more responsibilities than just blowing off people's genitals. He also has to take the time to issue them citations for things like parking violations and vandalism. This is pivotal to how NPCs will react to you though, as you can either opt to rigidly uphold the law, which tends to make you less popular with citizens, or you can issue warnings and advices, which serves the public trust and will generally have people responding better to your presence. The music is too loud. My sound sensor measures 126 decibels. You are damaging your ears as we speak. Oh man, don't talk to me like that. I don't understand numbers. I personally would have been happy with a game where you do nothing but mow down criminals with high-powered weapons, but these little side missions are a nice diversion and do offer some pretty funny dialogue in the process. Although some of these side missions are more tedious than anything, running items back and forth at the police station, for example, can be kind of annoying busy work. But hey, if you want to be a good cop, sometimes you need to take a break from all the violence to sign a get well card and address some complaints. Madam, you have suffered an emotional shock. I will notify a rape crisis center. So the gameplay, for the most part, is very fun and the story is fairly engaging and entertaining, which just leaves the visuals and sound design, which are a bit of a mixed bag, but overall, I would say they're quite good. The various environments in the game look especially nice, even approaching photorealism at times, and they contain a high level of detail, but the character models do leave a little bit to be desired. I noticed that a lot of them have this sort of plastic action figure look about them, which was kind of off-putting. Robocop himself, on the other hand, looks excellent. A perfect representation of the character and the destructibility of the environments and the people inhabiting them is fantastic. Whether it's a rundown old factory or a video rental store, everything blows up real good. The soundtrack is kind of so-so, in my opinion, often feeling more like just a score in line with one of the films as opposed to an action game OST, but there are some especially cool 80s style rock tracks thrown in for good measure, which I enjoyed a lot more, but a bit of synth wave would have also been appreciated. But overall, Rogue City does a great job capturing the style of an 80s movie depicting what a dystopian future might look like for a major American city. So all things considered, Robocop Rogue City is one of my favorite games that I played in 2023. I was genuinely surprised by just how good it was. 
and I had an absolute blast playing it. Regardless if you're a RoboCop fan or not, if you enjoy a good action game with some funny dialogue and excessive violence, this is a perfect choice, and I highly recommend picking it up. I played the PS5 version for this review, but it's also available on Xbox and PC. Regardless of how you play it though, strap yourself in for one kick-ass game that'll have you saying, <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. No. Fuck.